For Jeremy Porter, life was good. Jeremy is a typical junior in high school with a pretty normal family. Dad works, mom stays at home, and his eighth grade sister is just little drama. Oh, and of course there's Lefty, the family dog. Jeremy's got great friends. Most of them play varsity basketball with him. And Jeremy's girlfriend never misses any of their games. As a Jesus follower, Jeremy has stood out. He knows his good life has everything to do with God. But what about when his life takes a turn? You see, close by a bet has been made between two figures. The first figure believes Jeremy will always be devoted and follow Jesus. The second figure believes Jeremy will forsake everything about God as soon as life becomes difficult and unfair. Both figures await the outcome as the second one begins to mess with Jeremy's perfect life. This had never happened to Jeremy before. His mom insisted their family doctor run all kinds of tests. The results were not good. Brain cancer. Jeremy couldn't even bring himself to say it. It still didn't even seem real. But it was real. Real enough that Jeremy had surgery and started chemo three times a week. Real enough that Jeremy had to quit the team. Real enough that Jeremy could only do half days at school and his grades were dropping. Real enough that Jeremy didn't think life could get much worse. But it did. Jeremy's dad lost his job. His parents wouldn't stop fighting. His dad eventually moved out. His girlfriend dumped him. Even Lefty. Their dog was gone, found dead by the side of the road. Jeremy couldn't believe it. He wanted to trust God through all of this, but he just didn't know if he could. A few friends came by, hoping to encourage Jeremy. But all they did was encourage Jeremy to doubt God even more. Later in the day, someone from Jeremy's small group at church came by. His name was Carson. Jeremy didn't know him very well, but appreciated the visit. Carson encouraged Jeremy that he and the rest of the group were praying for him. He encouraged Jeremy to continue trusting God no matter what. Jeremy didn't know if he could do that. Just then, the doctor's office called. He needed to see Jeremy right away. Wait, Jeremy thought. Terminal?
Jeremy clearly had a lot on his mind, but that didn't stop little drama from turning into big drama. As if Jeremy didn't know how awful things were, eventually she was questioning God too. If God is real, why would he take my brother away? Jeremy still had no answers. But he had friends. Carson kept coming by, and the rest of the small group from church joined him. They told Jeremy not to give up hope, to keep trusting Jesus through all this, and they prayed. Jeremy was on the edge of a decision. Would he reject God? Or would he trust him no matter what happened? Jeremy realized that when he decided to follow Jesus, he wasn't guaranteed a perfect life but he was guaranteed that Jesus would always be with him. He would never fail or abandon him. So Jeremy made his choice. With tears streaming down his face, he told God, All right, my life has completely fallen apart. Whatever my life has become, it's still yours. Do whatever you want but I'm asking you to please, please help me. And in that moment, he felt a peace inside his heart that he had never known. And that peace alone was an answer from God that he was still with Jeremy, that he would always be with Jeremy. I wish I could tell you that after Jeremy prayed, Everything in his life immediately went back to normal. But that didn't happen. After Jeremy prayed, his cancer actually got much worse. But even though his health declined, his faith never wavered. And God did answer his prayer for help in other ways. A couple months later, his dad moved back in and his parents started counseling. His dad even found a new job. Things started to get better. And then, it happened. A miracle. The doctors had no explanation. Jeremy's health got better and better. Today, his cancer is gone. The doctors still do tests every month, just in case. Jeremy is a stronger Jesus follower than he ever was before. He knows difficult times will come again. Difficult times always come. The question is, who will see you through those times? Jeremy knows who. Close by, a bet is being settled. The loser reluctantly admits that Jeremy continued to follow God regardless of the difficulty he faced. But he holds on to the fact that Jeremy almost turned away. The winner merely smiles and adds, but he didn't. The toughest time to trust Jesus is when something comes into our life that we don't understand, but when we're forced to suffer in some way. Jeremy Porter lived this out right in front of us. And for you, the question is not if you'll have to deal with a tough situation in your life. The question is when you do, where will you turn? I would hate for us to go through this whole story and miss the point. 
This is not just a story about a student having to deal with and overcome tough circumstances. This is not a story about why bad things happen to good people. This is a story about trust. When we're at our lowest, most broken point, when our faith is on the line, will we still trust God or will we fall? It's a choice. And it's not a choice we only have to make once. It's a choice we will have to make over and over and over again. And there's a word for this. You saw Jeremy come to this moment in his backyard. And the word that describes this process of choosing to trust God is surrender. Now, when we hear that word in maybe sports or stories about history, we usually associate it with weakness, like with losing. But surrendering to God takes so much strength. We give up our way and we accept what God has in store for us because we trust that he knows what is actually best for us. If we're gonna trust God fully, we have to surrender fully. Throughout Jeremy Porter's story, we've also been learning from a guy in the Bible named Job. He was a guy who had everything. He had family, money, possessions, success, but he lost it all. And most of the book of Job is these long conversations with his friends where they're giving him advice on why his life is falling apart and what he can do to make it better. Now, some advice was kind of good and a lot of it was pretty bad. But it leads Job to this place where he begins to feel like he might know what's best for him better than God. And finally, in the last couple chapters of the story, God speaks directly to Job. It would be awesome for you to read Job chapters 38 through 42 on your own just to see the whole conversation. But let me summarize real quick. God helped Job understand that there was no way that Job could see the whole picture. He could not begin to comprehend what God had planned for him, and there was no way for him to fully understand God's ways. And so suddenly it clicks for Job. He is not in control. All he can control is how he reacts to his situation. He has to keep persevering through the pain, even though he may never know all the reasons why it was happening to him. And all of this leads to a moment of surrender, a moment where he chooses to trust God's plan, knowing that God's ways are best. Let me read for you what Job says to God after he surrenders absolutely everything to him. I know you can do everything. You make plans and nothing can change or stop them. You asked, who is this ignorant person saying these foolish things? I talked about things I did not understand. I talked about things too amazing for me to know. You said to me, listen, and I will speak. I will ask you questions and you will answer me. In the past, I heard about you, but now I have seen you with my own eyes and I am ashamed of myself. I am so sorry. As I sit in the dust and ashes, I promise to change my heart and my life. Job surrendered. He gave up what he thought and fully trusted the God that created him. And in the end, God blessed him. And Job at the time couldn't have known that God was going to bless him with more than he had lost. He wasn't motivated by what he could get by surrendering. He made his choice to surrender regardless of what God would or would not do for him. Now, I don't know where you are or what pain you're dealing with in your life right now, but we all face the same difficult decision. Will you trust God? Will you surrender fully to him? Or will you keep trying to figure it out and fix it on your own? One way leads to life and hope. And the other leads to pain and frustration. Job tried both. Jeremy Porter tried both. I know I've tried both. And let me assure you, surrendering to God is always the way to go, no matter what is going on in your life.